Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to NextRev Power Hour on Production Drawings and Creo Parametric. My name is Jason, and I'll be conducting today's Power Hour. Well, first, we'll talk a little bit about who NextRev is. We'll talk some about the production drawing uh, issues that come up uh, quite often. And then I'll show a few examples, and then we'll open up for questions. NextRev is located in the Silicon Valley in Santa Clara, and we've been in business since 2001. We provide consulting, training, and um, technical support, pretty much any type of support surrounding the PTC suite of products, so Creo Parametric, Pro Engineer, Windchill, Creo Direct, um, any of the modules within those tools, we also provide uh, training and support on. We are the largest reseller on the West Coast. If you're interested in us and you've never done business with us before, you can reach us at nextrev.com, N-X-R-E-V.com. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump right into it. Um, one of the first things I'd like to address are the uh, drawing templates that basically get underutilized in Creo Parametric. And just, you know, judging from, Judging from a lot of the questions that we get within the system, uh, within you know drawing questions and alike, um, I get the sense that drawing templates really aren't used enough. And uh, and I'll touch on how to create the drawing templates and how it can really save you some time and reduce time in starting your drawing or even detailing a drawing. Uh, typically, what I see is a drawing being started off using um, you know, you use the new drawing command, you jump into the tool, and then you specify the template you want to use by using empty with format or empty, um, which means that basically you're going to have to drink, bring in the format uh, into your drawing after the drawing is created. A lot of other things are going to have to happen at that point, and I guess the point here is that you really want to set all that up uh, in advance and you want to have the format and any detail options read into your drawings each time you start it with a template so that you're not having to set these things and bring in your format each time you start a drawing. So we'll talk a little bit about how, how I normally see a drawing started and how you really should start a drawing uh, in, in its place and so basically using a format over uh, using a template over a format. Here's some of the things that we can configure with templates. And now, bare minimum, we should have a, a, a title block with uh, the borders. We should also have our detail file with all of the different uh, options turned on. So, like if you if you prefer filled arrowheads, one of the defaults in, in Creo from drawing mode is to have empty arrowheads. So, if you want filled arrowheads, that's one of the options. You can have every single one of your drawings started with. Uh, the other is you can have views brought in for each uh, part that you st start a drawing of or each assembly you start a drawing of. Now, this isn't always going to be uh, something you want to use, but um, if it gets you started with, say, just a front and side view or an ISO view, and you know that every single one of your drawings for that particular template is going to need those views, go ahead and add them. Uh, when your views are added, then what you can do is you can actually have you know, detail options from the model brought in. So when I say that, I mean, uh, if you're creating dimensions at the drawing level, those are drafted dimensions. But uh, then those would always have to be created after you bring in your views. But if you have dimensions, notes, symbols, um, anything that can be pulled, uh, information pulled from the model, we can have those brought into the views as well. So dimensions, for instance, dimensions can be automatically detailed the snap lines placed in, in the views and really all you have to do is a little maybe a little cleanup on each view to, to get it looking properly. The other thing I want, would like to discuss today is bringing in tolerances into our dimensions and also bringing in geometric tolerances uh, to you know uh, further detail our, our parts out. Uh, so one of the, the challenges, and, and this should really shouldn't be as much of a challenge as, as, uh, as I make it, but one of the things is tolerance mode is turned off, both in drawing mode and in part mode, uh, or in modeling mode. So I'm going to show you how to turn those on on both sides. 
so that you can show tolerancing in your in your in your dimensions when you need it. And the other is going to be to show you how to um, place those tolerances inside the dimension. So you see in Figure One and Two, they're actually manipulating the dimensional tolerances, or you know, specifying a plus minus tolerance or limits tolerance. Uh, and then they're also defining the number of decimal places. So that'll allow you to do that. And one of the other things you can do when you when you turn on to tolerance mode is you can actually uh, tell it what type of tolerance mode you want to go with. Do you want to go with ISO tolerances, ANSI tolerances? And uh, you also have a few other options. You see there, tolerance class, uh, depending on the type of tolerance you might be doing, there's there's quite a few options you can you can utilize. Uh, then I'll be getting into geometric tolerances where I where we where I'm just going to show a simple example where I use a true position tolerance to place a hole. Uh, but what it's going to do is show you uh, a really nice overview of the the few steps that you have to take to place that geometric tolerance. Uh, there are just a couple of things you need to do, and um, and I'll show you a few of the kind of the gotchas that you're going to run into as you uh, you start to place these. So one of the things you you have to do up front before you start playing geometric placing geometric tolerances is you must um, you know bring in a basic dimension or an inspection dimension a basic dimension in the case of certain GTOLs that's quite straightforward and actually you can place a geometric tolerance without doing this but it's best as a best practice you want to have basic dimensions in your models so I'll show how to to bring those in. The next is to bring in reference datums into your model. Now these can be placed in the model itself or in drawing mode. Depending on the complexity of the model, you may choose to do it in, in inside modeling mode where you place your, your A, B, C datums. Um, but just know that you can place them at the drawing level and um, it, you know it can be done that way. Once we have that, we can then place our geometric tolerances within the model. The other thing I want to touch on are repeat regions. So basically smart tables within Creo. These smart tables would be used for tables such as parts list, uh, bill of materials. We want that to autofill with all of the parts we have in our, in our assemblies. We want the quantities listed. We want, you know, if we're storing our own user-defined parameters like material, we want that listed as well. So I'll show you how to create a really simple table so you can see that kind of high-level overview of, of how to do that. There's a lot of other things we can do to these tables, but this is just to show you how to get started with them. And so here's some of the things we can do. We can sort tables. We can add dashes. We can if the table gets too long, we can actually paginate it to the next page, basically splitting it up between different sheets uh, for you know so that the table will continue to read its index numbers for the next sheet. And then finally, we can balloon our assembly views using the table that we've just created. And this is an automated ballooning of the the views themselves instead of placing drafted balloons. The other thing I want to touch on is setting up your drawing detail files. This is uh, where you're going to specify how you want your drawing to look. What kind of standard do you want it to go by? There are hundreds of settings in this uh, configuration file, and it is different than the config.pro. It is a drawing detail file, drawing setup file, some people call it, and it is stored in each drawing. So. Uh, it's not like the config.pro where we're changing options in the config.pro and it influences the behavior of the rest of Creo uh, and all of the models thereafter. This is uh, a drawing specific detail file which which is makes it even more important to get this in your template so that you're starting each one of your drawings the same each time. Otherwise you're going to have to go through drawings and, ch and change settings uh, that you forgot to. Or, or read in the file that you've you've created. So we'll talk a little bit about that drawing details file and some of the option, some of the common options I see changed there. 
Uh, then I'll talk a little bit about the drawing uh, rep tool and basically dealing with large assembly drawings. Uh, one of the issues we have with large assembly drawings, especially multi-sheet drawings that, you know, you get into 20 sheets or, or more uh, and, and quite a few components within our assembly. So we're talking, you know, uh, hundreds or thousands of components in an assembly. We run into refresh time and, and time for the sheets to load. Uh, and so there's uh, some config.pro pro options we can use to alleviate some of that and, and speed up performance. We can also use drawing the drawing rep tool um, and some other techniques to get around this problem. Uh, one of those is to create separate drawings for each sheet and then merge the drawings at the end. That's a, a bit more drastic uh, and you definitely need to be working with extremely large assemblies to really have a pro that big of a problem to, to kind of split up the drawings and then merge them later. But that can be done. And so that's uh, one other thing you're gonna do, you could do, I'm not gonna be showing that today, but I'll be showing some of the config options and the drawing rep tool. Okay, so let's go ahead and show some examples. Now, what I wanna do is first start off by creating a drawing the way I see it being done uh, in typically today the way it's been done using kind of the out-of-the-box uh, setup which isn't uh, ideal so what I'm going to do is start with a new drawing okay I'm just going to leave this use default template checked and I'm going to create a drawing for this gearbox now since this model is the active one if I start a drawing it's going to use that model automatically if I don't have the, the part that I want open, I'm going to have to go browse for it. So just keep that in mind. That's the first thing. Uh, the second thing is uh, here where you have used templates, empty with format, and empty. What, so what I typically see is empty with format. And uh, then, then uh, what I see is going and browsing for some format on the hard drive to bring into, uh, into session. Either that or they're using the out-of-the-box format and uh, starting it this way. So in my format, I have a parameter called uh, drawn underscore by, and it's prompting me to enter a value for that. So I'm just going to put my name in, and then you should see that show up here. So now in your formats, uh, you can bring in things like the model name, drawing name, description, uh, any parameters you want to put and in, feed into your to your border and to your uh, format, you can do. But you see here what I've done is I've started a drawing with a, a format. It's got a template, but let's just go ahead and start placing some views. I'm going to go ahead and insert my general view, and I'm going to turn off this do not prompt for combined state. I don't want to be prompted on that anymore. Um, this is actually a discussion for uh, another day. So I'm going to bring in the front view, and then I'll just bring in a couple of uh, pr uh, projection views just by right mouse clicking on that view, dragging to the top and to the right. Now let me just change the view display of these drawing views, and I can put a box around them, go to the properties, and we'll just go ahead and change the view display to no hidden. It's best to use uh, set your, your drawing views with a display style so that um, you know, otherwise what it's going to be doing is it's going to be setting and following the environment. In other words, if I have my model set to shaded, all my views are going to be shaded. So set this to uh, either no hidden or hidden. Those are the, the two uh, options I see most of the time. Now we're going to unlock this view and kind of move it out a little bit. We're just going to start adding some dimensions so you can kind of see what I'm uh, talking about as far as starting this drawing. So we'll bring in some dimensions and we'll let these dimensions stay behind. I'm going to say okay to that. And you see how the arrowheads are not filled in. Um, one of the things that I've done is I've, uh, uh, you know, brought in the format separately from the template. I've brought in the dimensions which are okay for me now, but I really don't um, I really don't want the arrowheads to be filled. So one of the things I'd want to do is, is change that, uh, the way that, that these views come into the, the template here. 
So let me just close this up and I'm going to show a different way to start this. So first we'll create a template. Now I have a, a couple of formats here. And the format is simply the border with the title block. Uh, it has no drawing property set. It has um, no sort of intelligence to it whatsoever. It is simply a bunch of line work that we use for our border and our, and our uh, title block. So what I'm going to do is start a new drawing. And that's basically what a template is. It is a empty drawing with no drawings being added. So I'm going to go drawing, and then we're going to say empty. We'll just use a, a different size, and we'll say, okay, we'll use uh, the C size. I'll use a C size format to bring that in. Okay, so right now we have this blank drawing. The first thing I want to do is come over to Tools and switch to Template Mode. The reason why I want to do this is a couple. There's a couple of reasons I want to do that. Um, if you come over here to the layout tab, uh, what you don't see over here are any template tools. If I switch over to templates, this then allows me to gain access to the template view command, which I'm going to show in a second. The other thing that this does is, if I let's say I decide to add parameters to my template that I want to pull from the model, so uh, model name. If I start adding those those parameters to my template without being in template mode, those parameters are going to try to pull whatever information they can, and if they can't find any information, they turn into uh, basically just dumb text. So it's best to stay in template mode when you're setting up a template. So now the, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start automating this process a little bit. Um, I'm going to bring in a template view and now the template view opens this dialog box. Now what I'm, I'm going to do is call this the front view and you can see the orientation that it's looking for is front. Now whatever my orientation names are I need to enter that here exactly as it is. So if I have an ISO view or if I have a right view I'll be entering that in this location. Likewise with the rest of these different view types. So if I've created a simplified rep or an exploded view in my model and I list that here, this view that I bring in for each one of my models will be um, will use those those values. If I don't have an exploded view for each one of my assemblies that uses this view, well that exploded view is not going to show up. Okay. So the next thing I want to do is turn on my snap lines and turn on my dimensions. What this is going to do is bring in all of the dimensions from the model uh, for that view that can be shown in that view. And it's also going to bring in snap lines for the for the dimensions. Okay. So let's go ahead and place that view. And as you can see, it's just giving me kind of a, a icon here to show me where that view would show up. This this uh, representation of this model really means not, nothing more than where that drawing view is going to show up. So I'll do another template view. We'll just make this right. Again, I want to call the right side view for my orientations of the model. And we'll call this right side view. And again, we'll bring in the snap lines and the dimensions. And we'll place that view here. And then maybe if I wanted to bring in a ISO view, just have to make sure that an ISO view is being created inside my models, otherwise, probably best to use the default view, which is, is more or less a ISO view. And we won't bring any dimensions or snap lines in for that. The model display, what we'll do is we'll set that to shaded. Maybe I want to see the ISO view as a shaded model. Okay. I'll place that here. I'll just kind of move this over to there. Next thing I need to do is bring in a format. So I'm going to go into my sheet setup, click on the down arrow where it says format, and I'm going to go browse, and I'm going to go to my directory where I've stored my format. Now it's important that when you do this, you realize that the format and the template, again, are separate entities. They need to, though, exist in the same folder. 
if you try to use a template and the format is not in that folder, it will not pick it up and use it. So it's fine that I'm creating this template here, but the format itself is its own uh, entity that can be changed unto itself. So keep those located in the same area. So now I have this, this template. It's got, um, it's got my border, uh, title block, a few views. One other thing I may want to do, and, and I will want to do in my template, and I'm going to get into more detail on this later, is set my drawing properties. This is where I was telling you before where you can actually come in and you can tell it the way you want your drawing details to look. There's quite a few things in here. you got text height, text thickness. Uh, one of the things that uh, I normally change, and I know it seems trivial, but uh, is the arrow style. So this is just to show you. So we'll change that to filled. Um, the other things we're going to get into are um, GTALs. If you do a search for GTALs and you search for descriptions, click on find now, it's going to come up with all of the GTAL settings that are available where you can influence the way that GTAL is going to look. GTAL display style, standard, and ASME Y1441. So it really depends on your company standards, how you want to set these things, um, generally speaking. So set those the way you want them. And now I can basically save this out as a template. Right now it's just called template.drw. Save it to a, a folder that I can access this, this template from and start each and every drawing with this template so that it comes with all of the things that I, I want to uh, start my drawing with. That way I'm not going through a process each time I start a drawing of creating that drawing. So I'm going to say new drawing here. Let's just start one with a this clutch body part and I'm not going to use a default template I want to go to the template setting and just go browse there is a way to point to your template specifically and um, and you'll want to do that so that it, it speeds things up even more but I'm going to go to this folder here where I have the template for my part so you can have and I've seen this quite a bit over the years where you know, some companies will have multiple part templates. They have different types of parts. So they have different types of borders and different standards and different uh, uh, detail file options set for each one of their templates. In this case, I have two DRWs. They're both defined as templates. I know that just because of the way they're named. And you have one for an assembly and one for a part. I'm going to grab that one for the part and say OK. And you see here, it's already asking me for my name because that parameter's in there, drawn by name. It's put four different views in. It's put the border in. And uh, any detail options I've made should also come in here. Now, just keep in mind that, you know, I wouldn't go too overboard with this. I mean, you know, you really have to kind of play to the least the common denominator, which is why a lot of people will just leave the views out and, and go with just a border title block and some detail options because maybe not every drawing gets this front and right side view or ISO view so you know maybe you go with one that just has the front view and that's a good starting point and maybe it comes in with the dimensions that can be brought into that it's up to you how you want to set this up but just this is just to show you the different ways of doing it okay So next time I'm going to talk a little bit about the detail file itself specific to a drawing. So we see we see these arrowheads are filled in. That's because I changed that detail option. Now if I um, set the option and I'm thinking that each drawing that I start after that point is going to have the you know empty arrowheads if I like those better, that's not going to be the case. You need to set this in your template so that you know, each time you start a drawing, it'll have those settings. If you start, a, you know, 10 drawings and you realize, oops, I, I made a mistake, well, you're going to have to open each one of these drawings and you're going to have to change that setting independently. Okay. So, as you can see here, uh, we are showing uh, filled arrowheads. We're showing dimensions that are, uh, you know, tolerance. And the way we're able to accomplish that is through the detail file settings. Let's go in there 
And you may end up spending a lot of time in here initially with your templates to get them set up properly. And uh, that's, a, that's okay. Uh, it's, it's one of those things where you just have to put that work in up front to save yourself time for each subsequent drawing. But here we go. We got the arrowhead setting that I was telling you about. And that one was set to filled. Here we go. It shows you the default value, and then it shows you the value that you, that you have it set to. Uh, one of the other settings that you'll want to use is the tall display. So this is kind of attacking two, two birds with one stone here, where uh, the default value is no, and I set it to yes. Setting it to yes allows dimensions to be tolerance essentially is what it does so um, more often than not this is turned on and just left on so those detail file settings uh, can influence a lot about the way the drawing looks and I, I definitely recommend you you changing those one one thing that I want to mention about that as well is if you have a nice detail file settings that, that that's been created in a drawing what you can do Come to that drawing and just go to this uh, save as disk uh, save as icon here you save this out to disk so you know for, to your to whatever folder it is you may start in we'll go to this detail settings here you can see there's three other ones in there and these would have my iso standard jis standard and maybe this is going to be my ansi standard so i'm going to go ahead and save that the nice thing about that is Let's say I do come across a drawing that doesn't have those details set up on it. What I can do is I can start that drawing. So let me just start a drawing and out of the box we'll go with, um, let's see, we'll go with this piston part here. Start a new drawing for it. I'm going to use a template. From my templates directory. And so now I see. OK, my arrowheads aren't filled. And that's because I started it with my template that I created earlier. And I, I didn't make these changes to the detail file. Okay, so it's not the end of the world if you forget to, to do this to your drawings. If you have one that's kind of squared away and all the detail options are set, you save it to disk like I just did, and then you come back into the drawing properties of your new drawing, detail files, and then you go grab that from disk, that detail file. So there's my ANSI one. I'm going to apply that. You see all the changes that it made there. So now I have filled arrowheads, I have tolerances. So again, you can read out that detail file, read them into your existing drawings and save you some time and correcting those, setting those up properly. So another thing I'd like to talk about is tolerancing. And again, we're going to go into the detail file for that. You see that none of these dimensions have tolerances on them. What I want to do is bring those in. First, let's go take a look at the model because unfortunately, it's handled independent of the drawing. If I double click on some of these dimensions here, or some of these features to show their dimensions. I'll see that none of the tolerances are really showing up there. Now, on the on the modeling side, you do have to go into the config.pro, and there's going to be a setting called tall display. Now, the default is no. Whenever you see the star, that is the default, default value. So even if this setting wasn't there, and, you know, I just left it completely alone and out of the box, I'm still not going to get any tolerances on my dimensions. So what I need to do is add that to my config.pro. So let's go into config.pro editor, and we're going to go find that setting. I'm going to search on descriptions. 
Just type in TOL star or TOL, either way. You're going to get a lot of settings that way. But what you want is the tall display. And you want to set that to yes. Let's just go down and take a look at it. Let's make sure it's got it, it was added. Okay, so we see tall display set to yes. We've got the green star indicating that it was a new setting added. I'm going to say OK, and I'm going to save it permanently to my config.pro. So now if I go into the properties of any of these dimensions, I should now be able to set those away from the nominal values to limits, plus minus, whatever that might be. Okay, before this was grayed out. Okay, so working our way back over to the drawing, we kind of need to do the same thing over here. We need to set the tolerance mode to be on for the drawing. Now you'll want to do this again in your, I'm sorry, that's the one wrong location. Let's go to prepare drawing properties. You'll want to do this to your template. And I kind of know, I'm going to search for it again. And in this case, tall display is what we want to turn on. I'll close that up, apply it. And so now what we should be able to do to our dimensions here is go into properties and change the nominal value to either limits or plus minus, whatever it calls for in that case. Okay, so the next uh, example that I want to show um, is creating geometric tolerances for your part. Now, there's a couple of areas here where people kind of get a little hung up, and I'm going to show the steps that it takes to get this in. Now, first of all, what I'm going to be doing is creating a positional tolerance for this hole here. Uh, the first thing I want to do, this isn't a requirement. It's just kind of a best practice, and a lot of people don't know how to set these two dimensions if they need to, to basic dimensions. I select them both at the same time using my control key, right mouse click and go to properties. I'm just going to go to display and set that to basic. Now I've got basic dimensions that are dimensioning the placement of this hole. Okay, and so now the next thing I need to do is I need to get some datums in here that I can use as references for my feature control frame that I'll be using for this geometric tolerance. Otherwise, um, it will not let me add anything to this. Now, I can I could use my right top front, rename those to ABC. Most of the time, it's it's good to you know set up your own datum references uh, that kind of sit on top of the geometry that you've already created. So I want to, I'll, I'll, I'll need a, a datum for this surface here, one for here, and then a C datum for um, the bottom surface or top surface, whatever, wherever it's going to be held uh, during that uh, process. So now one way to do this is to open up the part and start adding datums to it. Uh, that's one way to do it. Another way is to just add the datum at the drawing level. Now your part needs to be part needs to be as such so that you can do that. In other words, I have to have a surface to click on to add that datum. So we see this model datum pick here. I should be able to come in with a my C datum, for instance. I'll change that to a set datum. Set datum is the type of datum you're going to use to apply to a geometric tolerance. And I'll put that on this surface or the bottom surface. I'm going to query select for that. 
say OK, and I have my first datum in there. Let me just pull this dimension down some. That's my first datum. I need two more. I need A and B. The problem I have, though, is being able to select uh, this geometry here. Let's see if we can do it. I'm going to say A. Now I can pick through these menu manager picks here, but what I recommend you do is just kind of go over to the model itself and just add your two more datums. It's going to be a little more straightforward. So you got that datum and this datum here. So you've got C, A, B. Just bring up those datums there. Okay, and let me just show the datum tags. So those are just sitting right on top of front and right. And what I need to do is come in to the properties of that, change it to the datum tag that I want. So we got A properties and then change this to B. Go with that set datum tag there. And just keep the datum uh, tags where they are. So now I see when I come over to my drawing, I should be seeing those datum show up. And I'll, I'll probably have to do a little bit of repositioning of those tags so you can actually see them. change my witness lines, get my witness lines looking a little better here. Okay, so pretty much we have everything we need here uh, to get a datum, get our uh, geometric tolerance into the drawing. So what I'm going to do is click on geometric tolerances that you see here in the annotate tab. And it, it is defaulted to positional tolerance. And I just assume that that's most of what we're adding to drawings these days is positional tolerances, and that's why they default to, the, to that. And in this particular case, I will be adding that. Now, what it needs is the model that you'll be placing the geometric tolerance in, because this actually pushes the geometric tolerance into that part, so that if you show, you know, if you open the model and you view the dimensions, you'll actually see the geometric tolerance on that dimension. So it needs to know the model. If it's just a single model drawing, then it's going to pretty much fill that in for you. The next thing it needs is a geometric reference of some sort. You can pick from any of these types. Normally I'll just do for a hole, I'll just do an edge reference and I'll just pick right on the edge of that hole. Okay, so that's the feature it's looking for within this part. And then the third thing it needs is the placement of the actual geometric tolerance feature control frame. So you'll see the other options we have here. We can do a free note. Uh, which is common in, in, in areas where we can't get something to attach, we'll use a free note. If we're doing it inside of a dimension, if we're placing that G-tall just below the dimension, we're going to use that option. And we're going to click there and you're going to show that geometric tolerance there. Right now we have the symbol for the type of geometric tolerance we're doing. We also have the tolerance itself. We don't have a whole lot of other information here, so let's go ahead and add that. We're just going to go through each one of these tabs and add the stuff that we need. So for this tab here, this is where we're going to reference to our A. And you see how it's updating as I go through it. Secondary uh, datum reference is going to be B. And that tertiary datum reference is going to be C. Any of these can be set to you know, maximum material condition, uh, least material condition, regardless of feature size. The other thing we may want to do is go to the tolerance value itself and update it. So we'll just make it 0 0.005 and we'll make it uh, at maximum material condition of that hole. And in the symbols area we can add the diameter. We'll go ahead and hit the enter key on that 0 0.005 to get it to update. Now we can add any of these other symbols here, free state, set boundary, and we can add notes above the GTAL and to the right of the GTAL. 
if we don't have any more stuff to add, we're just going to say OK to that, and we have our first GTOL in our part, which is attached to that dimension. That said, uh, each GTOL is slightly different as to the types of references you're picking. Uh, in general, it's fairly specific, and if you know the GTOL and, and what you're trying to control, which type of geometry can type type of geometry you're trying to control, um, you'll know uh, intuitively which uh, geometric references to pick on. Okay, so we're done with the geometric tolerancing. Let's move on to tables. Let me actually open a drawing here that's got some Okay, now you can see here we have a, a, an assembly drawing. It's got quite a bit of parts to it, uh, and not the largest assembly I've seen, but uh, you know this has got you know 100 or so parts in it. We also have a table here that automatically filled in with all of the, the part names, uh, an index number, one through however many components, quantities. They just have the type here, but you can pretty much put whatever you want in these tables. Uh, what you want to do is switch over to the table tab and what I'm going to do is create one of these for you from scratch. You can see that in action. I just want to do a box selection of that table and hit the uh, delete button to get rid of it. Now first I want to address one thing here. You see as I drag there's a little bit of lagginess in there as I move the, the mouse. So what I'd like to do is speed that up a little bit. Larger drawings like this can be a bit of a problem as far as production goes uh, in dealing with this. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do, the easiest thing you can do, is come over to the View tab and turn on your fast hidden line removal of drawings. If it's not turned on already, you'll want to turn that on. And that should speed up things considerably for you. The other is I have a handful of config.pro options that I'm going to read in into my configuration editor. Now, over the years, I've kind of brought these in. You need to use this import configuration file utility. Browse over to the browse over to the folder where you have the config.pro options listed, and let me just show you what those are. Let me double click on that config.pro, and you can see. There's a, a dozen or so settings here that address things like silhouette edges, tangency edges, retain display memory. These are all meant to speed up drawing, um, speed up the drawing manipulation as you, you go through the sheets and, and pan and zoom on each one of those sheets. Some of these are a little more extreme than others, uh, like the uh, displaying that in view as minimal wireframe. But you know, it's just when you're placing that minimal wireframe view that it, it really shows that way. Um, so try these out and see how you like them. Most of them are meant to just remove uh, more and more line work from the the drawing, so you can get stuff added to it, dimensions, notes, tables, those sorts of things. So you can see that did really kind of speed up the uh, drawing a little bit. Now let me just go ahead and add the, the table itself. First I'm going to insert just a, a basic table that ha has no smarts to it whatsoever. I'll go with four columns and two rows. I, I definitely need two rows. The amount of columns really is determined by which parameters I want to add to this. And you can add columns and rows later. So here's our table. Uh, to start off, now there's a couple of things I need to do to this table before I start making a smart table with the repeat region. Um, I need to go into the properties of the table, and I can do that by selecting it, selecting the entire table, box select it, or just select on the top corner to, to grab the whole thing. I find it's easier to box select it. We're going to go into the properties by right mouse clicking, and we're going to determine which way it's going to grow. Do we want it to grow down and to the right? 
Do we want it to go grow down and to the left? Or do we want it to go grow up and to the right? And that's the, actually the one that I want right now. We can even change the column uh, uh, height of the cells and the width of the cells from that location. We'll come back to that later. So for this uh, first cell, I want that to be my index. Second cell, I want that to be the name of the model or the number of the model, however you want to phrase it. And then, you know, maybe a description of the model. In this case, I, I don't know that I have any descriptions for this assembly. I can go take a look. We'll say DESC. And then for this last one, we'll go with quantity, QTY. We'll just go take a look at one of these parts here, and we'll see if we have a description parameter. I'm going to open this part up and go to Tools, Parameters. So I do have a description parameter, but it's not being used. But the point of showing you this is that you could put material, any other of your own parameters, as long as your parts have that filled in with a value, that's something else you can bring into the into the tables on the drawing. I'm going to select those, select this bottom row here, and I'm just going to do a little bit of formatting to my text. I'm going to go to the text style. I'm going to center that up a little bit. Now this second row, this is kind of where you, you start to automate the table. Um, you need to add a repeat region to that table. If in your table tab and you go to the data group, you'll see repeat region. Click on repeat region and we want to add a repeat region. Click on the first and the last cell. And what you should see when you switch the symbols on it is you should see a purple magenta colored box inside of those cells. Let's switch the symbols back. You can see that when I'm switching the symbols on this, I'm actually looking at the repeat region and any parameters that I've placed here. When I switch back, I'm actually seeing the, the actual values that have been filled in. We'll switch the symbols here, and I'm going to actually put parameters in each one of these. So we'll go in here, we'll say assembly, member, and for the index, I'm sorry, let's go back up. I, Close that one will go repeat quantity, uh, repeat index. So there's these three guys here, repeat index, level, and quantity, that will fill in. They're more or less system parameters that we can pull from the model. So system, so this one would be repeat index. This one would be repeat quantity. For the number, I'm just going to use the model name in this case, you know, although you could have your own. Uh, part numbers if you'd like. I'm going to go with assembly, member, and then name. That's going to be the actual model name. For this guy here, for the description, this is a user-defined parameter. Now, you're not going to probably see all of this populated because I would have had to be good about going through all of my parts and making sure that every single one of them have a description. But just to show you how it works, you're going to go to assembly, and you're going to go to member, and you're going to select user defined. And I was going to say, well, what user defined parameter do you want to bring in here? We're going to say description. So then that's going to bring in that description for each model. All right. Now I see the parameter layout. That's good enough. I'm, I'm happy with that. So I'm just going to switch the symbols. Now you can see this table is now getting filled in with all the different parts, so 1 through 25. Now the quantity is not showing up for a reason I'm going to explain in a second. You'll see here that there's bolts in here that are listed more than one time. We basically call that a duplicate view. We can change this fairly easily. What we're going to do is we're going to go into repeat region again, and we're going to set the attributes on this. You go to attributes, click on your table, and you'll say no duplicates. And that's one thing it'll fix. So you can see now the quantities are showing up. I'm showing quantities of two for one of these screws, this one as well. So that's one way to do it. You can also see that a couple of these parts, the muffler has, and the engine, have descriptions filled in for them. So the engine assembly itself is here. If I open this up and I go look at the parameters under tools, 
Yep, I'm seeing the description is filled in here. Let's change that. Let's say um, engine. Drill engine. We'll come over here to our table and we'll see that it updates automatically for us. And that's going to be the case for quantities, the numbers, anything else you pull into the table. It's, it's fully associative to the rest of the model and it's going to update for you. I need this to be a little bit wider, so I'm going to right mouse click on that one cell, basically the repeat region base cell here that you see. And I'm going to go into the properties. I'm sorry, into the uh, height and width. For the column width, we'll go with uh, 40 characters long. You can see how I can change the cell width. And I'll need to do the same thing for the number. Now, one other thing I want to do here is tell the, this particular table what type of, of uh, balloons I want to see. Again, I can write, I can select on the table by box selecting, go into properties, and go to the second tab, bomb balloons. Here I can tell it, oh, I want this simple balloon, basically just a, a balloon with the index number inside of it, or I want a quantity split circle, which is going to give me the it's in the upper half of the balloon, it's going to give me the index. The lower half is going to give me the quantity. Or I can create my own custom balloon, browse for it, and bring it in and use that one instead. So we'll go with the quantity split balloons. And then I'm going to go ahead and create my balloons. Now, there's a couple of ways of doing this. I could have an isometric view in here that's exploded and shows, you know, uh, all the parts clearly labeled with the balloon. Or I can uh, do it another way. Let me just bring in a, a default view for this, a uh, ISO view for this. We have a 3D one. Let's try that one out. That one will work. There, you display to no hidden. And then we'll create our balloons. And I'm going to create it by view. And click on this view here. And so now you're seeing the balloons come in. Now, to get this, you know, to clear this up some, I've obviously got to move these balloons around. I also would want to do this maybe on an exploded view so that I could see things clear. Um, but that's generally the, the workflow you want to use to create a table. Now, once you have this, ta this table created, <coughs> what you're going to want to do is save it out so that you can reuse it over and over again. Either you can place this table inside of your assembly drawing template so that it's always going to be there for you. Like this drawing, when I first started, it had one inside of it. Or we can select it and we can save that table to disk and reuse that table. What we would do is go table from file and we would go grab that table from a folder that we uh, specify and uh, bring that in each time. Uh, I'm a personal fan of just placing it in the, in the assembly template that you create. And if you don't really don't need it, you can just select it and delete it out if you, if you, if you don't need it. So. Okay, now, as far as dealing with, again, with large assemblies, uh, a couple of things they've added to the software as, as well as the being able to bounce between the sheets here. So I got sheet one and sheet two at the bottom. If you hover over those long enough, you'll see what's actually on the sheet. So a lot of times when you were dealing with large drawings, we're, we're having to go to, you know, whatever sheet it is that has that view on it to make some change. And instead of going through each sheet trying to find it, we can actually hover over it and see a preview to decide, okay, well, yeah, that's the sheet I want, so I'm gonna go ahead and select on that. So just keep that in mind, that you don't have to go through each sheet if it's a large drawing, you don't have to go through each sheet to, uh, to possibly, uh, you know, find the sheet that you want.
So one other thing I'll show is dealing again with uh, large assembly drawings. We had some config.pro options. We have the fast hidden line removal for drawings. We have the ability to, to hover over our sheet numbers here and, and see a preview. What I'm going to do is add a couple more sheets here. I'm just going to move these some of these views around. Move that to sheet two. Sheet one will move another view over to sheet three. Okay, so typically what we're doing is we're working on a sheet or multiple sheets of a drawing. If we have a multi-sheet drawing, what we can do is bring in just this information that we want to see. So, for instance, if I'm just working on the, the first sheet of this drawing for the next four or five hours, well, why would I want to bring in everything else that I'm seeing in this drawing? If I've got a 20-sheet drawing, there is a way of bringing in just the data you need just for that one sheet. And the way we do that is through drawing reps. What you're going to do is come over to Tools, Utilities, and you're going to create a drawing representation. We'll create a drawing representation. We'll say Sheet 1. And for Sheet 1, what we do is we tell it what we want to erase or display. So in this case, we don't want to dis display all the views, which is what it's doing right now. We'll go ahead and select that and delete it. What we want to do is show only Sheet 1. Okay, that's, that's probably the simplest way I can show that. We'll say add, so that's going to erase, I'm sorry, I did that in reverse. We'll say display sheet one. Display all views on sheet one. What this means is that it's going to erase all the other sheets. If I do this, erase. So erase all views and display all views on sheet one. So you see on the subsequent sheets, sheet two and three, we're not showing any views. And so what I would then do is go through and create a drawing wrap for each one of my sheets. Now that's the most basic way of creating these, but you can actually go through and let it know that you only want to see one view out of the entire drawing. What this is going to do for you, for instance, is it's going to call into session only the models you need for that drawing sheet, and it'll exclude everything else out. It'll also reduce the number of lines that it needs to show on the screen at once by doing this. So just a simple way of bringing in only things that you want to see. Okay, so that about wraps it up today. Uh, thank you for joining today's Power Hour. Uh, what I'd like to do now is open it up for any questions you may have. Okay, thanks, and have a good weekend. Uh, and join us next week for the next Power Hour by NextRev. Thank you. Bye.